Up in the northeast corner of Ulster lies Port Stewart. Apart from being famous for its golf courses, this little seaside town has, since 1929, been the start and finishing point for Ireland's annual Northwest 200 motorcycle races. Run over a course of 11 miles, it has three classes, the 500, 350 and 250cc models, all racing at the same time, but with half minute intervals between the mass starts of the different classes. In the paddock, the usual pre-race excitement is everywhere, as the machines are checked and fueled. Bob McIntyre, Norton, is undoubtedly favourite in the big class. Bob, always completely imperturbable at times of tension such as this. And that's Bob Brown of Australia, I think, but as usual, our cameraman hasn't got his mind on the job and it's hard to see. Alastair King from Glasgow, one of the favourites for the 350 class. It's nice to see all the boys looking so relaxed at this stage. Last year's winner, Jack Brett. He's McIntyre's most serious rival. And now they come out in front of the grandstand for the warming up period. just what Bob's thinking about. Number seven, that's Jeff Tanner, who's expected to be somewhere up on the leaderboard. And now they form upon the grid according to practice times. In pole position is Bob McIntyre, slightly faster than Jack Brett. G. Purvis from Belfast on the BSA and Bob Brown from Australia on a Norton complete the first row. Two minutes to go. The riders' faces reflect their varying reactions. The flag's up. They roar away towards Henry's Corner and the promenade. It's Bob Brown in the lead from Bob McIntyre. And as the 500 class races along the promenade and on to Coleraine, back to the start of the 350s plus Bill Smith, a 500cc late starter. Around Henry's corner go the 350s. Back on the line, the 250cc class is waiting. And now the whole field is away. Already, down at Milburn Hairpin, the 500cc leaders are appearing. And it's Bob McIntyre first, five seconds ahead of Jack Brett. With Bob Brown in third position. Jeff Tanner fourth. Over Shell Hill Bridge and along the fast stretch of the Metropole Corner in Port Rush goes McIntyre, widening the gap between the fields as they, in turn, take the tricky S of the bridge. Now down at Port Rush, McIntyre is six seconds ahead of Brett and is beginning to move really fast. Here he is going through Craigtown and out onto the coast road. 
that part of the course which has been widened and straightened for this year's race. exit and a lamppost in your way if you overdo it. McIntyre and Brett are quickly leaving the field far behind. Now McIntyre pushes his speed still higher and sets a new record for the lap at 102.04 miles an hour. Seven seconds faster than Brett's previous record. Number 52, Alistair King, is leading the 350 class and incidentally is ahead of quite a number of 500s. And in the 250 class, the three NSUs of Rob, Halewood and Miller are locked in battle. At Shellbridge, Brooks, Daniels and Brown have their own struggle for fourth place in the large class. And now showers of rain come and riders are never sure if the road around the next bend will be wet or dry. And at Henry's Corner, it's definitely wet. But no damage is done, except perhaps to injured feelings, nor to McEvoy, who chooses Craig Town as his dismounting point. Patrick, second man in the 350 class, for a quick fill-up, and soon they'll all begin their refueling stops. But no one is expecting the leaders to need fuel, and it's a surprise when after eight laps, McIntyre comes in for a top-up. All eyes look for Brett. Will he get into the lead? Here he comes along the seafront. And he's past the pits and away with Bob still standing there. Away through Henry's corner goes Brett. And now McIntyre gets back into the race again. And what a race this will be if only Jack Brett doesn't stop for fuel. the pits, the signal board is out for him, and here comes Jack for a very rapid stop. But quick as it is, McIntyre's quicker, and he's passed and away in the lead again before Brett gets started. Once again, the order reverts to McIntyre first, Brett second. And lying now in third place, Bob Brown on number 14. Comfortably ahead of Bruce Daniels, number 21. In the 350 class, number 52, Alistair King, has over a minute's lead from Patrick. And in the 250s, Mike Harewood is just holding off Sammy Miller. 
Lap 15, three laps to go in the senior, and Bob McIntyre has a winning lead over Brett. Through Milburn, and up the slope to Shell Bridge. Through the fast swerves and on to Metropole Corner. At the stands, they wait for him to arrive. But he's overdue, and it's Brett who comes through. And Jack pulls into his pit for a precautionary top-up. Back at port rushes the answer. Bob's engine failed as he came down to Metropole Corner, and he's out of the race. And Jack Brett takes over the lead in a race in which he'd surely become resigned to second place, whilst Bob gets a lift back from a travelling marshal. But Bob still finds time to sign autographs, a difficult job to do at a moment filled with disappointment. And Brett goes through with only two laps between him and victory. Number 14, Bob Brown, gets a quick lift up into second position. And Bruce Daniels into third. Here goes Jack on his last tour. Back at the grandstands, they're ready and waiting for him. as the rest of the field gets the checkered flag. And indeed, no one could be a more popular winner of this race than Jack Brett, who, for the second year in succession, has carried off the main spoils. And this year, he gets not only the cup, but puts up a new record average speed of 98.40 miles an hour. Winner of the 350 class is Alastair King at 93.19 miles an hour. And Sammy Miller gets the 250cc verdict at 87.09 after a photo finish with Mike Halewood. And so ends the 1958 Northwest 200, the 22nd meeting of a classic event in the motorcycling calendar, which all enthusiasts hope to see continue for many years to come. Thank you.